so Sherry, um, one of the obvious ways that, that people become jurors is because they are uh, uh, previous uh, recipients or, or attendees of the festival, but you're an award winner because of the festival. Can you share with us your experience at Tallgrass? Yes, actually, this is the first time I've actually been at Tallgrass. I was not able to be here last year, but my film, which is called Miss Alma Thomas, A Life in Color, won Best Documentary Short. And that was a film that I wrote, directed, and edited. And it's about an African-American woman painter who passed away in 1978 uh, and is having a bit of a resurgence in her career. But she's someone that we should all know about as one of our great American artists. Art and fashion have obviously been something in your life for a very long time. Um, where did you, where was your first inclination or, or thought of, of fashion and art as, as a kid, as a teenager? Like, where did you become you? <laughs> <laughs> um, th that's interesting. This fashion has not been technically a, a field I've involved in, but obviously, I, you know, I think about my look and, and that sort of thing. You know, I, I think back to... Um, you know, being a teenager uh, in high school and going to uh, classes at the Art Museum in St. Louis. I grew up in St. Louis and um, they asked us to copy paintings and I thought that was boring. So when my mom would come pick me up, I'd be, those are the days of uh, hot pants. I would be uh, in the, the central hall of the museum with the, the oil pastels painting my legs um, with paisleys and flowers and, you know, so of doing body art which you know which I didn't know was body art but it was just and it's it's interesting that then I became later a performance artist and using my body in my work I'm curious other maybe than your mother what other women influencers have been in your life from a young age I mean you are obviously um, an influencer for so many people now I'm curious who influenced you though yeah, um, I'm lucky that my mother and my parents in general encouraged me to be an artist um, without any real care to like how are you going to support yourself and those kinds of things, although they were both involved in education, so that became a path for me. But And my mother introduced me to women artists um, that I wouldn't have learned about in art school because art school back in the 70s didn't really have any women artists in the curriculum. So I learned about people like Georgia O'Keeffe and just loved, you know, not only her her work but just like like her life like who she was she just looked so cool and she lived in the desert and she was really independent um, also Frida Kahlo who I adore and you know uh, you know the colors um, and Katie Kolwitz who is a uh, I'm of German descent and she was a German artist who did really you know in, intense work that had a very political it was often you know in defense of you know against war uh, in defense of you know women and children and that sort of thing so there were these women artists that were role models for me and and then artists who were merging kind of social justice issues with their work so that's that's just been always at the core of my work and so then fast forward to the mid 70s I moved to Los Angeles in 1975 to be part of a, an art movement the feminist art movement at the woman's building and there I had women teachers like Suzanne Lacey and Judy Chicago was one of the founders of this place called the woman's building that I I joined so you know I was swept up into this amazing community of women artists who were my peers and my mentors and you know, just fast forwarding to now, now I'm making my first feature documentary, which is about those years of feminist performance art in 1970s Los Angeles. How much change has happened in that? I mean, I know that's going to be a part of your documentary, but like those decades, LA has become vastly different, but also there's so many threads throughout that continue to, to, to make uh, California as a whole, I think, that, that liberal, open-minded yeah. nature. You know, it, it's it's weird. There's been so many changes, but then that that saying that the more things change, the more things stay the same. It's it's weird. Um, you know, back in those days, it was very. You know, I learned that I was a lesbian back in those days, but it, it was very terrifying to be out. You know, you literally, you know, you could not hold your girlfriend's hand on the street for fear of being, you know, somebody throwing a beer bottle at your head. So I feel like society has changed a lot in terms of and. 
I don't know how it is he, in the Midwest, because I haven't lived in the Midwest for a very long time, but in Los Angeles, it feels like a very liberal environment, and it's very freeing to be myself, and I have daughters who, you know, went through school with lesbian moms, and it was, like, not an issue, you know, mostly. Um, and, and also with women's rights. I feel like there's just so much choice now in terms of, of gender and freedom of expression. It's, it, you know, it's changed a lot. You know, at the same time, politically, we see this real swing to the right and, and the, the religious right, you know, the rise of, of that, which I find, I mean, I'm all for freedom of religion and, and, and I think people should believe what they care to believe, but it becomes scary to me when people are trying to curb other people's freedoms. And um, for me as a woman, as a lesbian, um, it, 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 I feel frightened about, about changes that we're seeing in our country right now. I, I feel like we're going back and it's it's scary. 2016 obviously may be a catalyst for what you're talking about this this backward step our whole country maybe our whole world to some extent. I'm I'm curious what you just said is are you optimistic are you st it does seem like it's getting worse. And I was just talking to Kevin Wilmot and we were talking about hate in the country. And not since Jim Crow have we seen kind of this backward step. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think is gonna, five, 10 years, is, is it gonna be okay for the LGBT community to even exist? I mean, I'm from Texas and what we're doing to trans community, children is, is scary. It's really scary. I mean, we're seeing whole groups of people leave and I mean, what just happened in Florida? I mean, Kansas, I mean, is another one of those places that's caught in that, that world, the Midwest as a whole. Is it optimism or is it fear? Like what's, what's next? You know, I, 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 I have a lot of fear, but I am also an optimist and that's just kind of the, my nature in a way. I'm a kind of glass half full. And I have 28 year old twin daughters, you know, and I do, I have faith and hope with the younger generation. I mean, my daughters are very politically aware and, and, you know, just determined to, you know, they're very committed to, uh, you know, living in a culture that is diverse and where everyone is celebrated. And so, you know, will their generation help us to, to keep the world being a safe place for for all of our expressions of who we are, um, I hope so. And, and they, my daughters, you know, they would never not vote. You know, they're they're very committed, and, and I raised them with those values. And their peers seem to be, but you know, I don't know if they're typical or or unusual. So that's the thing you don't know. And you know, I taught high school for 31 years, and. I loved working with young people and always exposing them to, and through film, you know, bringing into the, the, the classroom films about people that are different than my students and always, you know, and, and sometimes it was very challenging to them. But I also saw in the 31 years that I taught real changes in those young people, like in the early years, the, the boys especially were so homophobic. They were so freaked out about anything. And by the time I retired, boys, straight boys were sitting in each other's laps, holding hands, you know, not afraid to touch each other, be, be sweet and intimate. And um, it just, that, that gave me hope. Mm. That's so cool. Um, as far as being a juror and getting to see all the material you got to see, what were you looking for? What 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 caught your eye? Like, what were the things that um, are, are specific to what made you guys pick the winners you did? Yeah, yeah. And it was I, I loved working with our little team of four judges. You know, I, I was worried honestly that we would come and we'd each have our own like passion. You know, ones we really cared about, and we, we would have to argue and and. It, it, it worked, and we actually decided, and it's interesting, the festival didn't tell us how to do it, didn't say score or, you know, or even how to deliberate, you know, they just put us together and let us, so our little group, we started
started by just sharing with each other what was important to us individually. And for me, you know, I always look, you have to look at craft. You know, you want something that's crafted well, that's shot well, that's edited well, that's written well. But, you know, that can't be enough. You know, it's to me, it's got to be a film that has something to say or is bringing you a perspective that you haven't seen before, is telling a story in a unique, unique way. And um, so, yeah, and I think that was important to all of us. Um, and we all came from slightly different backgrounds, so that was um, uh, different and interesting. And uh, yeah, but for example, um, the film that we picked for best, um, was it our best uh, vortex? I think it was our best experimental. And I'm blanking on the name of it. The house is the body. The house is a series of familiar rooms. The body is a series of familiar rooms. I think it's the house. Yeah. The house, yeah. I had actually seen that in another film festival, and that film is just so incredibly, I would really encourage people to seek it out. It's it's a couple talking, they're, they're, they're painting the environment while they're in it. So you can't even figure out how that, you spend the entire film wondering how they've made this film. <laughs> it's, it's so intriguing, and yet that could be a distraction. You could kind of wander off and like forget like what, what it's about. But they're having this very intimate human conversation about the, the, the man in the relationship. It's a man and a woman. He has some rare condition that puts makes him have chronic pain all the time, and yet they can't get married because then he won't get the health care benefits that he needs to get his pain meds and then there's all these restrictions about pain meds because they're so addictive and people won't give him the meds he needs and, and it's just it, it's this glimpse into um, intimacy a relationship, the American health care system, the body, you know, there's so many things going on and it's not preaching at you, it's just these people like having this little conversation and all the while they're painting and the backgrounds are like the wallpaper is painted and the door is painted and, and the flowers on the table in front of them are painted and, and yet they're you know, filmed and you're just like it's just it's just such an extraordinary and unusual film that it was it was yeah it was that was an easy choice for all of us I'm curious with that excitement and seeing something like that how have other films molded you as uh, not just a filmmaker but as an artist Whew. Um, well, I love being at film festivals because you learn so much and you, you it's a way to rapid fire see a lot of work and you learn sometimes as much from things that don't work or that you don't like as the things you do like. But you're, you know, I love that about being a filmmaker and an artist, I suppose, but especially a filmmaker, you're just always learning new things by how people are telling stories, you know, the stories they're telling and how they're telling the stories. So, uh, you know, another film I saw here the other day was Quantum Cowboys, which yeah. has like 15 styles of animation. And it's just, again, you're just like constantly like, wow, you know, this is so interesting. So, I mean, especially for me, I come out of the visual arts, you know. I, anything that is visually delightful um, just keeps me very engaged. But yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's other specifics. Um, yeah, I think I've, I've just always been attracted to good storytelling, but told in a unique way. You brought up Frida earlier, and I, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask, what is your favorite artwork or piece of hers? Um, Frida's big. My, my family really loves her, and uh, my sister-in-law adores her, so I'm just curious. I'm trying to think. I actually have a bunch of Frida Kahlo um, reproductions in my house. They, um, they It was actually a, 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 some company that was licensed. It actually got the license to paint her paintings. <laughs> so they're actual paintings. And I always, it's kind of cheesy as I have like Frida Kahlo paintings in my house that are real paintings and they're legit, right? But they're, I mean, they're not real Frida Kahlo's. Um, gosh, which one? Uh, I love the two Fridas, you know, with the connecting hearts. Um, what else? I mean, we have one that I love, which is her sitting, looking very uh, a masculine butch in a suit with her hair. She's chopped all her hair off. She's sitting. It's very stark, and the, the bits of the hair are all over the floor. Um, that one has a lot of anger in it, I think, towards uh, her husband. <laughs> yeah, they're all good. <laughs> 
Well, Shay, I'd love to, to give you the chance to talk about what can we anticipate from you down the line? What's next for you? Anything you can share with us? Yeah. Yeah, so I am working on my first feature documentary, which is called Acting Like Women, and it's about feminist performance art in 1970s to 80s Los Angeles. And um, I moved to L.A. in 1975 as a 21-year-old woman seeking a feminist community, a place where I could grow as an artist and... and um, it just sort of kind of merge social justice issues with performance art. And, and performance art was a brand new medium then. It was barely, I mean, I, when I was doing it in, in college, because I'd been exposed to it in Europe, um, my teachers had never even heard of it. So it was, you know, it was very new. And it, it was very exciting because it was a, an art form that we as women really were attracted to. I think because it didn't have those traditions um, it, within art history of painting and sculpture, which were dominated by men. And, and it was also a time when women were not being shown in museums. So we, we were able to kind of forge this new world of doing work that was about issues of sexual violence, pay equity, the environment, you know, and, and bring together issues and art in public settings. So bring, bringing art to audiences that weren't being exposed to art. Now, nowadays, that actually has a name. It's called social practice art. Performance art is being taught in colleges. Um, and yet this movement that I was part of, I don't think has gotten its due. Mm. Um, it really should be part of the canon, the art historical canon. So my film is a very personal journey. I'm, it's, it's me telling my story of kind of personal transformation, but also it's a story of, I've interviewed like 45 people, men and women, um, scholars and artists, and uh, you know, it's a very rich story and I'm really excited about, you know, sort of forming this longer film. I've never made a feature. It's, it's, it's a big task. I, I mean, honestly, I think it could be a series, but I need somebody to help me to <laughs> develop that. So anyway, that's what I'm working on, and I have a great team, and it's, it's just a lot of fun. Well, Sherry, thank you for, for coming to Tallgrass. Um, we've loved your work previously, so it's great. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to see what comes down the line, and thank you for this chat. It was such a pleasure. Pleasure for me, too. Thanks.